Welcome to the review from the very beginning of the year. <clears throat> this is the characteristic of life. Um, the main objective here is to just be able to list the seven characteristics that all living things share. Um, a basic definition of biology wouldn't hurt either, the study of life. Okay, biologists agree on seven main characteristics. You may see it broken down into more than seven or less than seven, but all of these things will be included. The first one is organization in cells, response to stimulus, homeostasis, metabolism, growth and development, reproduction, and change through time. I'm going to quickly go through all seven of these. What we mean by organization in cells is that every living thing shows a high degree of order. This includes single-celled bacteria, paramecium, amoebas, all of the little organisms that we've looked at throughout the year show a degree of order even within that single cell. All living things are made of cells, and cells have organization. In most multicellular organisms, you're going to have organ systems organs, tissue, and then cells. This is the basic hierarchy and this seems like common sense but it may actually show up as simple as it is. Cells are the smallest unit of life. Cells bind together to form tissues. Tissues come together to form organs. Organs come together to form organ systems. <clears throat> the second characteristic is response to stimuli which is plural, or stimulus is singular. Um, the definition of stimulus is a physical or chemical change in the internal or external environment. Think about a stimulus package passed by our Congress and our government. The stimulus package is meant to incite some sort of um, response in the economy. So the word stimulus is really just something to incite change. <clears throat> it can be a physical thing, such as the wind blowing the leaves on the trees, causing um, water to evaporate more rapidly out of the leaves. It can be a chemical change, such as um, a lack of nitrogen in the soil and the roots for the tree. It can be internal or external, as we've talked about. <clears throat> Living things must respond to their internal and external environment in order to survive. One way that trees respond is they lose their leaves in the winter to conserve energy and to conserve water during the winter when water is more scarce. The third characteristics that all living things share is this idea of homeostasis. Homeostasis is stable internal conditions. If you can remember stable internal conditions, you'll be doing good. We have to maintain a certain level. Um, and it can be a variety of things. The examples that I have here are your body temperature. We like to keep our body at a nice toasty 98.6. Um, and the reason for that has to do with lots of the processes that go on inside of our bodies. The levels of chemical substances, such as salt. When we studied the <clears throat> diffusion and osmosis chapter, we looked at what happened when organisms were placed in very salty solutions or solutions that were pure water. And there's some definite response that needs to happen in order for the organism to survive. Um, levels of hormones need to stay pretty steady. Insulin is a hormone and insulin actually enables our body to process sugar. So even levels of hormones need to stay pretty stable. So metabolism. A lot of you associate this with um, food and health and nutrition as well you, you should and you can. Um, but metabolism is a little bit more technical than that. 
um, it's actually the sum of all the chemical reactions that take place um, in your body that transform um, energy or that make energy. So when you're talking about health and nutrition, if you have a, a fast metabolism, you transfer the food that you eat very quickly into energy. If you have a slower metabolism, it takes longer to convert that um, food into energy. And because it takes longer, you may end up storing more of it as fat. <coughs> Photosynthesis is um, a good example of metabolism in plants. Metabolism in people is pretty easy because, again, we have the health and nutrition thing to fall back on. But even plants um, have a metabolism, the chemical reactions that take place during photosynthesis is the metabolism of the plant. It's how it makes its energy. Number five is growth and development. Now, at first glance, growth and development may seem like the same thing. However, they are in fact very different. Growth is simply the act of increasing in size. Even non-living things can grow. For example, a wad of gum can grow if you put more gum on it. Um, a mountain can grow if it's pushed up from underneath by shifting plates. Um, <clears throat> development is unique, though, to living things. And it's the process, technically, by which an organism becomes a mature adult. Now, I realize some of you may not ever... Um, <clears throat> reach the point where you're mature all of the time as far as social standings and things like that, but that's not quite what we're talking about in biology. In biology, mature means able to reproduce. So you are mature after, the, um, after you go through the process of puberty. I put a tree as an example up here because a tree grows, obviously, here's a growing tree, um, a tree becomes mature when it can reproduce. Some oak trees don't become mature until they're close to 30, 40, even 50 years old. Kind of crazy. <coughs> the next characteristic that all living things share is reproduction. So once the living organism reaches maturity, um, it's able to reproduce. This is one of those things that is not essential to the survival of the organism, but it is essential to the survival of the species. Um, you may know some people who are unable to have children. They are still living. Um, they're just not able to reproduce. But as a whole, as a species, the species must be able to reproduce. There are two types of reproduction, which you should know pretty well by now. Um, the first one is sexual reproduction which is the union of gametes that are made during meiosis to produce offspring. The second one is asexual reproduction, and this is the production of offspring without sperm and eggs, and it results in offspring that are identical to the parent. So asexual reproduction is very similar um, and kind of close to cloning change through time. This is the one that a lot of you had trouble with at the beginning of the year. Um, again, this is more of a species driven characteristic than it is an individual. Yes, I realize you change throughout your lifetime. Perhaps you hated broccoli when you were a child. Perhaps you still hate it, but when you're 30 you may like it. We're not talking about those kinds of change and we're not even talking about that kind of time. We're talking about generations and generations and generations. We're talking about evolution here. That over the course of tens and hundreds of generations, that organisms may um, become better suited to their environments. So that's it. Keep plugging along.